Hello and welcome back to another Django tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to talk about how the internet and Django work together. It's important to understand this process when working with Django so you understand um, the structure and, and if you can anticipate how the requests are coming in and how you should respond it's going to make your life so much easier when you're writing your code. That's why I'm taking the time to explain this to you guys. I know it's boring but it's important. All right, so we're going to start out with a browser. All right, so I'm a user and I'm going to go visit a website. So I start out with Master Code Online. That's my website. I hit enter, and what happens is I'm sending a GET request. I'm sending a request out into the internet world. All right, this request goes to my um, expensive ass uh, internet provider. I won't mention any names, Frontier. Uh, they're really expensive. So anyway, um, I'm sending a request. It goes to their server, um, which is probably owned by Verizon because Verizon basically owns Frontier. Anyway, getting off track. Um, it goes to their server. Their server then sends out a request to a DNS server, a domain name system. Um, and that DNS server um, is basically like a phone book. So it looks up the URL, so mastercode.online, gets an IP address. I uh, hope you guys all know what an IP address is. It's basically an address to almost everything that's connected to the internet. Anyhow, um, gets the IP address, and then my server for my expensive ass uh, um, internet provider then takes that IP address and goes and locates the server that's hosting the data or our website. And it sends a request. And then that request goes into our um, server, goes through our server, through the VS, our WSGI interface, which we beat up in the previous tutorial, and then comes into our URLs. Well, actually, technically, it goes into settings. So it comes through WSGI into settings, and it sees root url conf template.urls and it goes oh that's where urls is located so it goes to urls and then django here will go through and try to match that url that was requested all right so mastercode.online so if we had something if our website was mastercode online uh we would have something in here that would match that but right now we don't have anything like that because it's not master code online. So we're just going to pretend someone went to master code online forward, forward slash admin. All right. So it goes through the process and it looks at every URL pattern in here. And it says, oh, admin. Yes. Yes. I. That's what I'm looking for. So it finds that and then it takes an argument after that. And this argument can go uh, many different ways. We can have a response right in here where um, it just responds with a certain template, if you will, and sends that back to the user. Uh, or it can have an, another argument where it sends it somewhere else, all right? And in this case, in the admin, it is. It's sending it to admin site.urls. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that, since I have no other code in here to show you. So let's go ahead and take a look at where it's going. So admin site URLs, Django contrib admin. So it's in there. So we go in the lib, then we go to Python 3, we go to site packages, we go to Django, and we go to contrib because it's in there. Then we go to admin. Let me move this over a little bit so I can see what the hell I'm doing. And then site URLs, I believe is in sites.py. And there we go. So almost halfway down the page um, is our URL patterns for admin. All right, uh, so admin site wide URLs. So if it matches our URL pattern, all right, so the this would be mastercode.online. It would look like this, mastercode.online, dot .online, like that. So it would look like that if someone put, the, put in their URL, all right? So then it goes there. Let me delete this before I can't figure out why my stuff ain't working. Um, <clears throat> and then comes in here. So was he was the person looking for um, just admin? If they were, then it will return that page 
which is the home page to admin. Where they look in the login, well, then it would return the login page. If it was looking to log out, then it would return the logout page. So we can have URL patterns all over the place as long as we map them properly. All right. <clears throat> so what Django does is it goes into the URLs first, looks to see if it can find a match. If it cannot find a match, it returns a 404 error, which basically says that page doesn't exist in the internet world. If it does find a match, then it follows the next argument, which in our case usually goes to the views.py file, which we don't have yet. Inside the views.py file is where we code our response, okay? And in that coding, we say, hey, we want to respond um, with a certain template. And that template is going to be an HTML document. And now in that views.py file, we can have a cert, uh, like I said, a template returned. And we can also return some information from the uh, database. And so the views.py kind of connects the URLs together and it connects the um, models together. So you can think about our URLs handle the request and our views handle the response, all right? So once we got all our data together, we send that response back out to the user um, through the internet and it shows up a nice little, you know, display of uh, a website where the browser interprets the HTML, the JavaScript, and CSS into making a nice little design. Now, when we send that response back, we might include some information from our database, and that database would be included in there and you know displayed via HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. All right. Um, so that's basically how the internet works, and this is how uh, Django handles it. One more time, we'll go through this so you guys understand it. The response comes through the WSGI goes into the urls.py file, tries to find the matching URL. If it finds the matching URL, it will go to the next argument, and that next argument will say, hey, this is where you can find the response. In most cases, it's in the views.py file. It goes into the views.py file, and it will look for that uh, specific view, which could either be a, a function in Python or a class. Once it locates that, that uh, specific uh, function or class, it will read that function or class and respond appropriately based on our code. All right, uh, that response uh, might have to grab some information from the data uh, from the database, and once it sends out that response, that response comes back in um, HTML, JavaScript, CSS type format. And then it comes back to this website and displays it via the browser. So the browser can read the HTML, JavaScript, and the uh, CSS, but the browser cannot read Python. So that's where Django kind of interpolates between taking Python and helping us convert it to HTML, JavaScript, and uh, CSS to display a nice uh, website full of data for our users. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, we're going to keep trugging, trucking along and uh, hopefully eventually start building a website. I'll see you then.